question with boldness even the existence of a God. For if there be one, he must more approve of the homage of reason than that of blind, folded fear. Who said that? Thomas Jefferson said that. And it applies so much to what we're dealing with right now as the world talks about the documentary installment, Plandemic, which is a vignette of a forthcoming documentary by Mickey Willis. The first installment of which was with Dr. Judy Mikovits, a virologist who has published many, many papers, I believe 50 plus. And I created a commentary video about the fact that Plandemic had been removed from YouTube. That video in about 48 hours has got about 50,000 views, which is amazing with so many comments. Uh, a lot of you have way, weighed in on it. And I wanna comment on that and go even further into this because my first video was really just kind of an experiment at, at, at raw emotion and wanted to see what people were thinking. That video, incidentally enough, um, about an 84% like to dislike ratio. That means 84% of you watching it are giving thumbs up versus thumbs down, which means there's a lot of people out there who agree with what I had to say regarding censorship, takedowns, um, the fact that Big Brother is watching and they don't like dissent and what they would call harmful misinformation, whatever that is. Who gets to decide that? So I want to get into that and address a number of I don't want to go too far into the content of the documentary because there are some bold, bold, bold accusations that as since I am not a medical professional and not a scientist, I'm not going to get into. But I will post links at the bottom for people who continue to challenge me and say, you're not a scientist, you don't know what you're talking about. Well, there are a lot of people that are, and they have looked into this very deeply. And I don't like uh, response video videos from Reddit and from Snopes and from places like that that basically are um, untrustworthy. So, and if you keep just spouting the same thing over and over again and hoping the lie gets perpetuated, then that's on you. So what I wanna talk about really is the fact that there are a number of issues in this documentary that are raised, but the bigger issue of it being censored, because what this speaks to more than anything else is dissent, respectful, researched dissent. Because we've been told by the World Health Organization and CDC and NIH many, 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 many lies those lies haven't been taken down. Those aren't flagged as fake news on Facebook and on YouTube and on Twitter. They're not taken down. So we're supposed to believe these entities that have told us all these truly misinformed things and false things. And when you have the CEO of YouTube saying, we're going to remove those things that we think are harmful and that are misinformed, and we're going to flag those things like taking vitamin C, for instance, they consider that misinformation. So they're going to remove it. That's dissent. That's dissent being censored. And I've heard a lot of people come at me and say, well, YouTube's a private, they're a private company. They can do whatever they want to do. Yeah, you're right. They are. It's not the government. You're right about that. But you're telling me you don't think the government and YouTube are working hand in hand on this based on how much dealings they've had in the past. And you're going to trust that? Who gets to decide what's true and what's false? The director of Plandemic, Mickey Willis, had reposted a documentary by the Epic Times. That documentary was about malfeasance at the, at the, uh, the Wuhan lab. Unfortunately, it got taken down. The arbiter of why it was taken down for Facebook is someone who works for the Wuhan lab. Now, at very best, that's a conflict of interest. But look at the people who are deciding. You want those people deciding for you what's true and what's false? Why can't you decide? Uh, remember, there is a documentary called What the Health, if you guys have ever seen that. It, talk, it exposes some very, very, very disturbing things about our food and about the Department of Agriculture and the FDA. And that video, as well as its debunking videos and dissenting videos, are both hosted on YouTube. Why would this be any different? And the bottom line, I believe, is that if you, if you don't go along with the fear-mongering that they're wanting, then you are taken down. And that's a problem because this is why we must have dissent in this country. The CCP, the Chinese Communist Party, does not allow dissent. That's why this virus got out in the first place, because of misinformation and the reduction of that information not being allowed to be spread. They let the virus spread. They didn't let the information spread. Okay, so 
If you want to live in that type of society, you're headed for it because that's where we are right now. Someone else is deciding for you what they think is harmful and not harmful. Even though nothing in this documentary talks about going and coughing on people and willfully infecting them. Nothing's in there about that. So what do they consider harmful? And who gets to decide that? You don't know. You do not know who's deciding that. But you trust them. You put a lot of faith in them as if it's a religion. Again, I go back to Al Gore and the religion of climate change. That he said the science is settled. Science is ever evolving. The greatest part about science is dissent. That's why there's peer review. So someone can check your work and say, this might not be true. Let's test it. It's an ever evolving situation. So why would you say this has all been settled when the World Health Organization has been wrong so many times? Why would you accept that? They're not flagged as false news, but pandemic is? That doesn't make any sense. Then you have to look at The Atlantic, an article that came out in The Atlantic at the end of April, I believe, talking about how free speech needed to be censored, that there are certain norms and values that have to be decided upon. Who gets to decide those? Not you, not me, somebody else up at the top. And if there's dissent, and it goes against the norms and the values of those few people deciding that, and you don't know who they work for, you don't know who pays them, you don't know what's going on, they get to decide for you. Now, in this country, it's the supremacy of the individual. We're supposed to make those decisions, not government. That's why I believe in limited government and individual freedom and individual responsibility. That's what this country is founded upon. I'm not some crazy right-wing nut. I am not a conspiracy theorist. I'm not um, a flat earther or a 9-11 truther or a birther. I'm not any of those things. So for those of you that have come at me and said, that's what I am, I'm not. I'm an inquisitive individual who wants to know more. And the one thing we know about this virus is we don't know anything about this virus or very little about it. So we should be investigating. We should be questioning with boldness, just as Thomas Jefferson said. And when you have dissent that is censored, something is amiss. And it's not just by the left. I know I made a point in my last video that a lot of liberals and globalists want this removed, who are so quick to dismiss Dr. Mikovits. And I've watched every pro probably four or five other videos with Dr. Mikovits since that time, and she expounds in great degree about her claims. You all need to watch that, but most of you won't because you just want to dismiss her outright. That shows you a problem in your own investigative research that you're too lazy to do it, okay? Dissent is being censored right now. And nobody's willing to do the research. You must be inquisitive. You must be questioning with boldness the existence of either the truth or the lie. But here's the deal. There's no such thing as, as, as your truth. There's the truth and then there's your opinion. Okay? So for anyone who says that any of this is settled is inaccurate and wrong. It's constantly evolving. You may recall in Plandemic that there was a doctor featured in there from California. His name was Dr. Erickson. And he talked about how we're shutting down our freedoms and our liberties just for the sake of what they're telling us. His video on YouTube was removed. So it's not just pandemic. It's anyone who is dissenting against this WHO system of thought. Because we don't have freedom of thought. And YouTube has decided, we'll get in on it too. We'll help police that which is why you have BitChute and other uh, platforms um, emerging to host dissenting views, which is the point. But in totalitarian regimes, you don't, get to you don't get to have dissent. So when I hear words like harmful misinformation, that sounds like a totalitarian regime. That's something you need to think about. By the way, the director of this film, Mickey Willis, I did some research on him, seems to be a Bernie Sanders supporter in 2016. Now, that should short-circuit a lot of you liberals out there. You thought it was a right-wing nut. You thought it was a Trump supporter. But it's not. So, put that in your pipe and smoke it. Also, there's dissent from the right. Greg Gutfeld of Fox News. He thinks the whole thing's BS. And he said, you know how I know it was BS? Because everybody told me to go watch it. Sorry, Greg, that's not very journalistic of you. You don't watch the film. You just decide based on the fact that everyone told you you must watch it. That's crap. So Greg Gutfeld on the right also has a problem with this. So it's right and left, which means, guess what? There may be a kernel of truth in this documentary. And I think we have to wait and see. The mainstream media is still not really picking it up. Maybe they're scared of who they're going to come after next. What's the rest of this documentary going to expose? But I did watch 
some of what Mickey Willis had posted. And it seems to me the guy is really coming from a good place, which is he does feel that we've been lied to. And he feels that he's, he lost everything in the California wildfires, he, uh, he and his family did. And he realized that what was important was each other, us as individuals. And he wants to stop the lie of Big Pharma. He wants to stop the poison that's being put in our bodies by different methods and what we're being told and what we don't know. And that we perpetuated lies because we've been blinded. We've had the wool pulled over our eyes and we need to be illuminated from that. And that comes from a good place. I don't think it's a right or left issue. It's not a Republican or Democrat issue. So I say this to my liberal watcher viewers out there. I'm not trying to chastise you. Many of you are coming at me and trying to discount this documentary altogether. I think what Mickey's trying to do is offer you the olive branch, as I am too. Let's find out together. Maybe this is about us coming together. It has divided us. There's no question the virus has divided us, and it's preventing us from doing what we normally do, which is talk with each other, visit with each other. You got a mask on, you can't hear each other. We're not talking like we used to. It's, it's sowing discord, it's sowing division. And we're finding out that Dr. Fauci was giving three and a half million dollars to the Wuhan lab. Nobody questions that. Nobody questions at the end of the documentary when he says there's a pandemic coming and it will happen in the next year or two. You know, the thing about it is, guys, is the cure can't be worse than the disease. What we're, tr what we're doing right now in killing our economy and reducing our freedoms and reducing the things that we do, the pressure it's putting on our mental system and the suicide rate that's going to happen from this and the mental health repercussions of this are going to be enormous. But all you people out there that say stay at home and let's just follow along with what the World Health Organization tells us, you're not thinking critically. You're not thinking about this in a bigger sense. You're not thinking about the fact that big tech could be colluding with government entities about this. You have to start thinking that way. Um, there's a bill out there right now that just got introduced into Congress, H.R. 6666. Not kidding you, look it up. It's called the COVID Testing Reaching and Contacting Everyone Act. That stands for, that's an acronym for the TRACE Act. They want to trace you. They're going to say, oh, we just want to make sure we know where the source is coming from. But that doesn't tell you where it's going. That doesn't tell you where the virus is going. So they want to trace you. Bill Gates wants to put a microchip right here in you. You guys all think Bill Gates is great, or at least a lot of you do. You think he's, oh, he's a philanthropist. Well, guess what? Marty Bird set up a, a, a foundation too. Does that make their foundations pure? Does that make everything they do seem philanthropic? Sure, it makes it seem that way. But look at the nefarious things they're doing in the meantime. So don't get, don't get it twisted that Bill Gates is some wonderful guy just because he's given away a lot of money. He wants to microchip you. I'm not having that done. I'm not having a vaccine shoved in my arm. We don't know where that came from. We don't know what's in it. You trust it when you go to the pharmacist or your doctor and you get that shot, but you don't really know what's in it. You're just told it's good for you. And doctors have pushed pills for many, many years. Pills that either don't work or that make you addicted. And no one's thinking about that. No one's thinking really critically about that, but you're willing to trust entities that have lied to you and have been wrong, not just for many, many years, but wrong about this virus. But they want you to shut up. They don't want dissent. They don't want you to question their motives or question what's going on. It's our way or the highway. And we're going to look at the mayor of Chicago. We're going to arrest you. We'll release felons, but we're going to put you in jail for not social distancing. That's abominable. That's, that's unspeakable. That mayor of Chicago is absurd. They'd rather release convicted felons and murderers than allow you to go in the park and play Frisbee with a couple people. That should shake you to the core. They want to put drones above us. They want to watch what you're doing. Again, I say Big Brother, I say 1984, you're watching it. You just don't see it that way, you know? You're, you're, you're not paying attention to what's going on around you. So... Again, I think I come back to my message is this. There are dissenting views out there and they should be permitted. And they're not being, at least not on YouTube and not on the big tech platforms. Uh, even my own reposting of Plandemic on Facebook just got removed as saying it was false news. And it had been vetted by some sort of scientific partner of theirs. Am I supposed to trust that the scientific partner of theirs is a legitimate scientific partner? Or just that it says so? just because they say so. It's fake news just because they say so. Don't think for yourself. Don't do any outside research. We told you so. We can't, we can't have that myth propagated. 
we got to make sure that you stay at home and you don't talk to other people and you don't go over someone else's house, even though a vast majority of people will pass this virus and not die from it. But we need to restrict your freedom. We need to ensure that you follow in lockstep with us, just like Big Brother wants us to. And we need to make sure that you don't question us. Don't question where this money is going to. Don't question who's partnering with us. It's all under the guise of we're looking out for you. And you know good and damn well they're not. You just have to think critically and question with boldness. Always. That's where truth will remain.